the Gato engine. Should you switch? There's no denying the appeal of game engines like Unreal and Unity with their AAA pedigree and high-end features, but does the little engine that could have something to offer? Well, today I'm gonna take the plunge for you and find out if the Gato engine is worth taking a look at. So let's check it out. Here's my process for checking out the Gato engine today. First, we're gonna take a look at the installation and setup process. Then we're gonna take a look at the 2D engine. Then create a very basic 2D room and a character that's gonna move within it. This way we'll get a quick look at the native GD script language that's within the Gato engine. To set up the Gato engine, head to gatoengine.org, click the download 3.5 button, and grab the 64-bit standard version. Now the first thing you might notice is how few files there are within the zip. That's because the Gato engine is small, like incredibly small, like Honey I Shrunk Frodo Baggins small. The engine is extremely portable. In fact, they even have a web version. And as far as the installation process, there isn't any. Simply drag the application out of the zip folder and open it. Now compare that to the downloading, installation, and compiling times of, say, the Unreal Engine, and that's a lot of saved time. Once you open the engine, all you need to do is create a new project, and you can jump right into creating. Those familiar with other engines will notice the game area in the middle, the inspector area on the right, and the object area on the left-hand side. Because the Gato engine has a 2D and 3D engine, you can switch between them at the top menu, or open up the script editor, or download assets from the community. One thing to note is how fast it is to move around the engine. And as far as I understand it, it's in part because the engine is actually built within the engine. The engine is a game within the engine. Gato is an object-oriented engine that uses scenes which are comprised of nodes. Scenes can be equal to a user interface, a weapon, a mob, or an entire level. Nodes, however, are the smaller building blocks of scenes that include more foundational aspects of game design like sprites, collisions, and physics bodies. For example, a character within your game could be made of a scene that is comprised of a kinematic node, a camera node, a sprite node, and a collision node. Because those nodes are within that one scene, that scene can be dragged and dropped within any other scene, and any edits you make to it would be consistent with any instances of that scene. So now that we know a little bit more about how Gato works, let's make something. So I'm actually gonna be trying out the 2D engine of Gato and I'm gonna be pulling from the Super Nintendo Classic, A Link to the Past. So I'm gonna go ahead and work on that, and then we'll take a look at how everything works. Oh, we're, we're doing a montage? I guess we're doing a montage. Cue the montage. Here's our result. You'll notice the scenes in the upper left hand corner of the screen. Our main scene video test contains all of these nodes, including our character node, and then additional child scenes below. The child scene is made up of our wall tile right here, and we've replicated those for the top, right, left, and bottom walls. The floor is actually making use of the tile map system. Using Gato's tile map system, you can use individual images or an atlas to create tiles that can then be painted onto the screen. And I have to say, I really like this tile system. It's really easy to use, and it's really intuitive to just paint your floor in. You'll also notice our play area shown here by the pink box, and our camera, which also is enclosed in that box. The kinematic body 2D node contains our character, which includes a collision shape 2D and a sprite. And you can see our link image over here on the right. That character has a script attached that is controlling our 2D character movement. I added a speed variable, a velocity vector, and a function to detect which key we're pressing to determine which direction the character should move. And another thing that I really like is that the script editor is within the game engine itself. So switching back and forth between the two is again, very fast. And I'm also finding that the GD native coding language is very easy to pick up, but it's also kind of fun. I typically develop in Unreal and I really enjoy using blueprints, but I have to say, it's also really nice to be able to just script things in code and have everything right there in front of you in the editor. So now that we've created our scene and added our player character, we should be able to move the character around with the keyboard. And then if we run into any of these walls, it should stop us with the collisions.
So even with learning how each of the nodes work and how to use them, that only took about 15 or 20 minutes to set up. Now visually, it looks like it took about 15 or 20 minutes to set up, but the concepts and how to use the nodes and set up the scenes and even use a tile map are all very intuitive and very easy to utilize and already have a character that can move with a keyboard and a room to move them in. So we understand a little bit more about how Gato works and what it takes to create something within the engine. So the question remains, should you switch or should you even use it at all? Well, after using the engine for a little bit, I'd say it depends. It depends on what kind of project you're working on. Are you working on a 2D project? Are you working on a 3D project? And what are the specific demands of that project? If you're gonna be working on something that is specifically drawn to say a first person shooter, you're gonna to wanna to be working with an engine that is tailored for that experience. An engine like Unreal has been battle tested for AAA titles within the first person shooter genre. There are aspects of the engine that are designed specifically for that genre. Engines will try to work for every circumstance, but again, if you're working on a 2D project and you're looking at Unreal, you have to realize that Unreal is tailored towards cinematic experiences, vast open world AAA titles. Sometimes you're gonna be fighting an uphill battle just to get what you need out of the engine, when really you could be using a different engine entirely. So if you're thinking about switching, Think about this. What do you need and why do you need it? What is your project? What aspects of your project are the most important? And what engine can provide that to you with the smallest amount of resistance? So if you're working on something that has a little bit of a smaller scope, or maybe you're trying to create a 2D tile set based game, then look for the engine that matches that scope. That said, I really enjoyed my time with the Gato engine, and I think it has a lot to offer to anyone who's working on game development. There are a number of things that I really like coming out of the engine. Gato engine feels lightning fast, and it's a joy to work within and be able to go back and forth between 2D, 3D, and the scripting editor, and be able to do it like that. It's also growing very quickly, and there's a lot of versatility out there, and there's good reason to think that it will continue to improve upon all the features that it currently has. Even my short time working with it today, Gato handles 2D very well. And then finally, for someone who might be a beginner, there's a lot of intuitive and very accessible aspects to the Gato engine. The scripting language is very simple to catch on to, and there's a lot of excellent documentation out there to help you get up to speed. And it also doesn't hurt that it's completely free and open source. Now, in all fairness, while there are a lot of things that I really like about the engine, there are some things where it's a little bit lacking. If you're working on a really complex 3D project, Gato might be a little bit behind from where you need it to be. An, an engine like Unity or Unreal are gonna be able to provide you a lot more features and options for a 3D game. And while it's true that the engine and the community are growing, it is still pretty small. So if you're looking for someone else to work with, or something specific in terms of a plugin, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to find than if you were working with another engine. But regardless of whether or not you think the Gato engine is a perfect fit for you or your project, it's very easy to just try it. As you saw earlier in the video, it's very quick and easy to install and set up and to dive right in. And frankly, you could spend just one afternoon and figure out whether or not it's a good fit for you. And if you're still out there trying to find the right game engine for your project or game, it's also important to remember this. The game engine does not define you as a game developer, and it does not determine how successful you are with what you produce. A game that lacks enthusiasm or passion is gonna struggle regardless of what engine you're developing it on. So it's always important to make sure that when you're picking a game engine, that it's gonna be one that's both comfortable and intuitive to work in. If this little sneak peek was useful for you or you enjoyed watching the video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. If you've already tried the engine and have your own thoughts, go ahead and leave a, a comment down below. And I'll put the links to the engine and a couple of resource sites down below in the description. And let me know if you're interested in any more Gato engine content. I, I'd love to dive in some more and maybe figure out some more mechanics. So until next time, this is a stay at home dev signing off.